the most challenging fight probably be Idris. Idris. The Rock, you know, he's just satisfying to beat. Idris could be about to suffer the biggest humiliation of his life. Everyone tells you, you know, you're not be able to do it. My dad, his only son, talking about being on the stage. It didn't quite relate to his dreams. He's trying to talk me out of this so many times. It was like a kick in the teeth immediately. <laughs> but I had to reinvent myself. Is this a good point to say that I don't want to do this anymore? Emergency services were called to the airplane where Idris Elba collapsed on board. What happened on the plane? I suddenly couldn't breathe. I was cool as it, and then boom, they took me off the plane and I went to hospital. When I think about it, it blows my mind. Everybody, everybody stop touching me. If he isn't careful, this could be over quickly. I could have come out of there in a coma, I could have come out of there with a broken leg or a broken nose. Did at no point did you have concern about that? I was so worried about messing that up. I didn't feel qualified. I'm afraid that I'll probably fall apart. Why didn't you just give up? When asthma hits you, your lungs, you know, it feel like you're in a bit of water and you've got this much air to breathe and it keeps creeping up. I had really bad asthma. They used to call me Asthma Boy. They decided to send me to a special school. Being treated like he was weak and vulnerable made Idris question his true strength. I was always someone that wanted to be someone else. I was so passionate about this idea of being someone else that it just transferred into acting. You know, you've got to work 10 times harder than the white kid. That's what my dad, my dad used to say. His only son was suddenly, you know, talking about being on the stage. It, it didn't quite re relate to his dreams of me. And the first thing he said to me about acting is that actors don't make money. Idris was determined to prove himself even without his dad's support. I would have liked to have gone drama school but couldn't afford it, so I suppose I taught myself to act on the job. So I got to a certain point in my career where I saw the glass ceiling. I realized that I could only play so many best friends or gang leaders. After years of hard work, Idris landed the chance to play an icon. If I'm honest, that, that role, man, caused the most trepidation in my life. I was so worried about messing that up. I didn't feel qualified to play Nelson Mandela. But he pushed past his fear of playing Mandela to make his dad proud. It was a real proud moment, because my dad is just like, he loved Mandela, he loved what he stood for. My dad was sort of like a freedom fighter, he was a sort of union guy. What was it like for you to have your father, whom you based the creation of Mandela on, to see you in that film? I can be there in the room when, when I showed my dad. I just, you know, sat in the, in the cinema and then walked out. And just to see his flesh and blood son playing the man was like, I think, overwhelming. He, he was in tears. Just as his dad started to accept him, Idris got some devastating news. Africans don't think cancer is something that happens to us. And yet lung cancer. And it spread very quickly. And more life-changing news quickly followed. On my birthday, me and I went to tell my dad that she was pregnant. And he went, well, boy, if it's a boy, and you know you must call him Winston. His father died just months later, and Idris couldn't cope. If you haven't grieved, have you at least made your peace with it? Um, I'm afraid that I'll probably fall apart if I do that, to be honest. For one person, that is extremely a lot. Mm. To lose a parent, to be traveling. You were traveling to South Africa. What happened on the plane? Are you OK? And you know, I've got asthma. I've always had asthma. I was fine all day. As soon as I sat on that plane, I suddenly couldn't breathe. And I was like, what is going on here? And I was cool as it. And then boom, they took me off the plane and I went to hospital. Idris ignored his grief to keep promoting the movie that had made his dad proud. No, I can't go off to South Africa now. Just, my dad just died for Christ's sake. But he just knew that he'd want me to do it. You know, he wouldn't say, yeah, you sit here and cry and moan. If that's what you want to do, go and do it. This is the death of someone that's real to me. But oh, I tell you, it's, it's weird how it's affected me massively. This should be the greatest time of my life, and I don't know. But his grief was catching up with him. Sweating, hell on that. We've got a tissue. Everybody, everybody stop touching me. All right, where's my family? I have to find them, eh? And at the Mandela premiere, he got more heartbreaking news. I was in the cinema with the Duchess on my left, Prince William next to us, and someone leaned over to the Duchess and said something to her, and she just looked up and looked at me and just passed me this phone. It said Nelson Mandela dies age 94. 
and the Duchess has burst into tears. The man that brought Idris closer to his dad was now gone too. The family said we'd like you to come to the funeral. It was a moment when um, I was sitting there and, you know, the whole world's watching. And at the end, he says, uh, you know, the man that played Nelson Mandela is here, Idris Elba. And all I heard was Elba. And, you know, I just can imagine, you know, that's my old man's name, you know what I mean? Like, my dad's name was recognised. It blew my mind, you know. When I think about it, it blows my mind. And when Idris became a dad, he finally came to terms with his grief. My dad dying and my son being born, this is what we're here for. It's full circle. Everything has a beginning and an end, and then a beginning. Because when I see my son, I just laugh, because I'm like, yeah, you know, that's me. That's, that's my rebirth, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love it, and, and my dad must have felt the same, you know? Despite everything he'd been through, he still had to prove something to that little boy who was sent to a special needs school. At age 44, completely untrained, Idris Elba is preparing for his professional kickboxing debut. Against a younger and more experienced opponent. Everyone tells you, you know, you're not be able to do it. It's too old, you can't fight well. The training is just relentless. And nothing is promised, right? Tomorrow is I not promised. So. Why even think, like, ah, uh, I should have done that? You might as well just get on and do it. Idris showed his true strength to the rest of the world. Then all of a sudden, Idris comes in. He's a skilled martial artist. And it's why <laughs> my personal goal was to make Idris the baddest bad guy the Fast Furious franchise has ever seen. And I told him this too. I said, you're going to be even a bigger star than you already are, by the way. By breaking down his boundaries, Idris proved that nothing could hold him back. I mean, it's important not to give yourself boundaries. I think it's important that people just go I and mean, lose the boundaries and just go for it.